Hey everyone, I'm Tasha Keeney. I'm an analyst at ARC. I work with Sam on our autonomous technology and robotic strategy. I cover autonomous technology and 3D printing mainly. And today I'm gonna to talk about uh, two different flavors of autonomous technology. So the, the first big idea is autonomous ride hailing. So, you know, why do we care so much about autonomous ride hail? Well, we think that autonomous cars could be uh, very inexpensive to consumers. And this is what will drive uh, widespread demand. We think autonomous taxis, autonomous ride hail systems could dominate urban transport. And ultimately, we think this could be one of those most meaningful um, economic productivity delivering innovations of all time. We think that the GDP contribution from autonomous ride hail systems could total around 26 trillion uh, by 2030. For reference, uh, GDP in 2021 uh, is estimated to be at about um, 89 trillion right now. Uh, numbers are coming out shortly, but that's the estimate. Um, and uh, you know that that 26 trillion it, it includes about two trillion of, of profits that we expect off of these systems. So this is a massive, massive market opportunity. All right, let's get into why. So as I said, we expect autonomous ride hailing to be extremely affordable. Um, at, at its floor, we expect the price per mile that you could profitably charge a consumer could be about 25 cents per mile. Um, and if you look at the chart here, how does this compare to, to what we have today and, and what, we, what we've experienced throughout time? Well, the price of point-to-point -point mobility really hasn't changed since the Model T rolled off the first assembly line. Back in the 1930s, the price to drive a new personal car was about 70 cents per mile, and it's still about 70 cents now. That's changing. With autonomous ride hail, we think um, thanks to higher utilization rates, that cost could be as low as 25 cents per mile. And to explain that a bit, you know, the utilization rate on a personal car is about 5% of the day or less. Um, a New York City taxi might get a 30% utilization rate. We think that autonomous taxis could get higher utilization rates north of 50%. This is what's driving the, the cost down. Of course, there'll be a lot of benefits to autonomous cars. We think they'll be a lot safer. Um, they'll be extremely convenient. Um, but what do we think will drive demand? Uh, that is this price. And autonomous ride hail should attract, you know, not only people that are in the ride hailing market today, participants in the market today, uh, but also car owners. So, uh, you know, a lot of the new work that we've done this year is around um, the price per mile that you could charge a consumer. So our first analysis said that that could be 25 cents per mile. Um, but now we've, we've taken a closer look and we actually think there should be um, many more price segments. And so how we got there is we looked at the, the value that consumers uh, perceive uh, to be on their time, the, 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 the perceived value of time that consumers ascribe to the, the time they spend driving. So we think that um, consumers value their time at about 60 cents to $1.10 per mile on average. You know, the high end of that is uh, time spent on commuting, work-related travel. The low end of that is time spent on say errands or you know personal travel. Um, but today, consumers pay about $2 per mile on average for ride hail in Western markets. That's about the average price of an Uber today. So they're already paying up for this additional convenience of ride hail. Um, and notably, this is also much higher than the marginal cost to drive. So the marginal cost to drive is the variable cost of driving. Um, it's basically what, what you think about when you drive, you know, the cost of gas, insurance, all the costs that you pay, you know, in a day to day or on an annual basis, as opposed to, to the fixed costs, which are also included in our um, 70 cents per mile estimate. So the marginal cost is about 34 cents per mile. Um, so consumers are paying much more than that for ride hail today. Um, and importantly, if you go back to that um, 25 cents per mile estimate that we have for, you know, as as cheap as can be autonomous driving, 
um, that's going to be lower than even the, just the marginal cost to drive at 34 cents. Um, so autonomous, autonomous ride hail is going to be attractive to, you know, people of all kinds. I, I think it's going to bring a lot more people into the ride hail market than we have there today. And, you know, when we segment the market, um, we, we've used the, the analysis that, that I just mentioned. So you can imagine that there's going to be a swath of demand worth, if you look at this chart, worth at around, you know, $134 billion. Um, that's using uh, price points from what we see in today's ride hailing options, that 2 to $4 per mile. And this is mainly in Western markets. Um, then at about $990 billion of opportunity, um, that will be for um, Western markets uh, supplanting commuting miles. So this is at the higher end of that value of time analysis that we did. Um, and then another $2.4 trillion of opportunity for non-commuting miles. So this is, again, Western markets, um, the value that people place on their uh, personal driving miles. And then there should be about, um, it, it, well, moving away from Western markets um, to places like China, uh, where ride hail is already extremely cheap, uh, that's another $2.75 trillion worth of opportunity. Um, so that's coming in at around 50 cents per mile, a little bit lower. And then finally, this super long tail that you see here in the graph, uh, an additional $5 trillion of opportunity at that low, low cost of 25 cents per mile um, for for autonomous taxis. And, you know, Sam, Sam mentioned in this presentation that there could be neighborhood electric vehicles. You can picture this being a purpose-built autonomous taxi. And this is a segment of the market where you bring um, many more people in that aren't participating in ride hail today because they're all, all of a sudden getting access to really cheap point to point travel. So all in all, this sums up to about an $11 trillion addressable market. And I'll note that that's the addressable market as a, and I'll get into later, you know, what we expect the market to actually be in the next 10 years or so. And one thing I'd like to note, um, because it's pretty topical, if you think about our, our 25 cents per mile estimate that, that brings in a lot of other people into the ride hail space, um, we actually think that autonomous taxis will also increase traffic globally. You can see here in the graph that in the next 10 years, you know, traffic could more than double. Um, this is because, of course, we expect uh, autonomous ride hailing to be cheap and convenient. People might take it more often. But again, more importantly, um, it could expand the customer base and this could add to miles traveled. Um, but uh, lucky us, we have, um, you know, we're seeing the, the, the early innings of air taxis. So these are autonomous electric machines that fly. Um, they can transport individuals or a couple people at once on uh, short trips. So um, this is some analysis that Sam has done. And um, when air taxis commercialize, uh, you know, regulatory requirements permitting, they could cost roughly the price of what a taxi would cost you from Manhattan to JFK today. So an airport cab. Um, but you'll get to the airport in about 18 minutes. Um, of course, this is much cheaper than today's helicopters. Um, and, and the trade-off at the time, you can imagine, will be um, either you take an air taxi or you take an autonomous taxi. The autonomous taxi, which you can see here in green, is going to be a lot cheaper, maybe just $10 for the whole trip. But it's going to take you longer, again, because traffic will be worse. So that's really the trade-off that you'll be making um, between the two. And then finally, I'll, I'll point out here on the graph, you see subways. Um, you know, we think that mass transit will likely still stay as one of the cheapest options out there. And when we look at the enterprise value that we expect off of these systems, um, we think the lion's share of the economics should accrue to the autonomous platform providers. These are the companies that actually own the technology stack, the companies building the technology that makes the car drive itself. Um, so that alone, by 2026, we think could be an $11.7 trillion dollar uh, bucket of public enterprise value ascribed to these systems. And if you think about the ride hail space today um, and the automakers and car rental, everyone in the car ecosystem today, 
Um, we don't necessarily think that those players will be the ones to um, be around in the future. So starting with ride hail, um, ride hailing companies, uh, their, their assets, their drivers um, are going away. Um, you know, unless they partner with successful autonomous technology providers, they may not be around in the next 10 years. Um, and then if they do partner with autonomous technology providers, the take rate that they get off their systems might be much lower than it is today because, um, you know, the company that makes the car drive itself it lowers costs. Um, those companies will have the most leverage here in the system. Automakers. So as of November last year, the enterprise value of, of all automakers was about $4 trillion. And remember that that's mostly gas powered car manufacturers, right? Um, EVs are in the single digit uh, percentage points of, of all cars produced um, every year. And in the future, we think that the autonomous electric auto manufacturer space, um, so this will consolidate. Not every automaker will survive the transition to electric technology, let alone autonomous technology. Um, but those that do could enjoy a $1.6 trillion opportunity in the autonomous electric future. Um, and again, that'll be a much more consolidated space. You know, I'll also point out that you could take the purple bar here on the graph on the right and the green bar and add them on top of each other. That's about a $13 trillion um, that we can assign to the enterprise value for fully integrated companies. So companies that are fully verticalized, like Tesla, that are producing both the technology stack and the hardware, the car that goes with it, um, could uh, sit in a market worth about $13 trillion in enterprise value. Lastly, fleet owners, um, that's about $300 billion worth of enterprise value by 2026. Um, these are companies that could be, uh, you know, car rental companies that want to survive this transition, um, companies that house and maintain the vehicles. They serve as an important part of the ecosystem. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the share of economics will be a bit smaller than the other two categories. So all in all, we expect that autonomous ride hail uh, could add about $26 trillion to global GDP by 2030. And it could be the most meaningful um, impact of any innovation in history. So first, how do we get there? Well, you can see here on the graph on the left, um, we're looking at these uh, various buckets of uh, total losses and total gains um, that we expect for that uh, 2030 GDP number. Um, so on the losses side, okay, almost $2 trillion of personal car sales. So um, you can imagine that as autonomous electric vehicles are available for ride hail, um, that people will start to forego car purchases. You may stop using your personal car, and then eventually the next the next time you, um, you come up to purchase one, you won't. Um, and, and these will be gas-powered cars mainly, right, that um, will no longer be purchased. So along with that, um, there's about $660 billion worth of fuel revenue um, that could go away. Um, and then maintenance, we, uh, you know, electric vehicles require um, much less maintenance than a gas powered car. We expect all autonomous vehicles to be electric. They're extremely cheap on an operating basis, but also um, we've heard that they offer better technology in integration as well, opportunities there. Um, and then on the, lastly, on the losses side, medical revenue, property repair revenue, and um, these are, uh, these are buckets that we're assigning to um, the revenues that are spent on car accidents. So every year, globally, over a million people die per year in car accidents. And in fact, today alone, um, you know, over 3,000 people will likely die. Um, so while, you know, we see these revenue streams going away, of course, overall, um, this is, a, you know, I think a net benefit to society. And then actually one more bucket um, is insurance. We expect autonomous cars will be 80% less likely to get in an accident um, than human-driven cars today. So um, insurance will likely be cheaper on these vehicles. Moving to gains, um, the total gains are about 30 trillion. This includes uh, 16 trillion productivity uplift. Uh, you know, Brett in the beginning of um, Big Ideas today mentioned that we think a lot autonomous technology could allow for this unlock where you turn. Um, previously unaccounted for economic activity, driving your car um, into economic activity. So maybe you'll be uh, reading work emails, doing work, or if you're Brett, maybe you're binge watching Netflix in the backseat of this vehicle. Um, 
10 trillion dollars in service revenue this is the uh the revenues that we expect off of the taxi platforms themselves um an economic gain for the for the preservation of life um again we're preventing uh over a million people of dying in auto accidents every year and they go on to be productive members of society and then um, about a trillion dollars of incremental autonomous car sales so if you look at the graph on the right all in all um, going back to the 1850s looking at the steam engine um, robots in the 1990s to the early 2000s and it from a similar time period as robots um, those all contributed less than one percent um, those all had, those were all very extremely meaningful, um, but their impact on annual GDP was less than a percent. We think that the impact from robo taxis could be uh, two to three percentage points on annual GDP by 2030. Um, so again, this is one of the most meaningful innovations that we will see in our lifetime. Thank you. Um, I'll be back soon uh, with autonomous logistics.